Welcome, Persisters and Brothers, to Persistence You with Lisbeth. Today, I am so very honored to have Vivian Gray with us today. Vivian is a woman of many trades. She is a wife, a mother, the consummate balancer of all things because she also has a day job in kind of finance, and I just am gonna mess this up, but I'll have Vivian explain it, and auditing, but really Vivian also has her own business now. And she is the director, basically, the person who began Phoenix Ascension. Vivian's gonna explain how around her 40th birthday, she realized that her life needed an abrupt change. And Vivian, welcome, and thank you so much for coming today and for, being with me on Persistence You. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be I here. I am really thrilled that you're here and I so thank you for being here. Vivian, tell us a little bit about, well, you, you have your one career, which is super, you know, it's kind of cerebral. And then you have the other, which there's that story behind it. I want to know the story behind Vivian and Phoenix Ascension. So, um, so I juggle many things, but um, in my day job, I'm a regulatory compliance consultant. I'm a VP for a financial institution. Um, so it's very analytical and very um, kind of structured. And uh, there's, I, I play within the rules, right? You play within the rules and I make other people play within the rules. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's, a, um, it's a very kind of button up job. Um, in that space, I, I found that, especially for women, that we had to kind of shut off our nurturing, emotional, kind of femin feminine side. And so I wanted to create a space where women could get back in touch with their femininity and figure out how to incorporate these nurturing qualities that we have so naturally into these more masculine dominated spaces. Um, and Phoenix Ascension kind of rose from my struggles of where I was at and trying to help other women find more balance in how to work within these really kind of dominant, male dominant spaces and keep in touch with our femininity. I love that. I worked also for like 20 years in probation work and not necessarily was I welcomed all the time by male counterparts so I can completely understand the need to create that space, especially when you're balancing so many things. I mean, what happened around your 40th birthday, as you mentioned before, what happened that was that pivotal moment where you're like, something's gotta change. Yeah, when I turned 40, um, so just to back up a little bit, um, I was a caregiver for my husband and in addition to all of the other things that I did, um, my kids at that point were going away to college. So there was no one at home anymore. Um, my husband's health has stabilized to the Good. point where he didn't really need a lot from me anymore. And so I ended up pouring a whole lot of my energy into working. So I was working 14 hour days and really kind of trying to struggle to climb the ladder. And I woke up and I was not happy. Sure. Um, I had all of the kind of material things that we strive for, nice house, good family, you know, cars, stuff like that. But inside, I was just not I'm happy. I didn't know exactly what I wanted out of life. I knew what my family wanted. I knew what everybody else wanted, but, you know, spending so much time catering to other people, it was very hard to figure out what exactly was mine and what belonged from other people. And also um, my health had deteriorated. So I was uh, overweight I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, oh uh, which scared me immensely because my family um, is hereditary and my grandmother was um, died from it. Um, you never die from diabetes, but from the, the symptoms um, that came along with it. So I knew that something had to give, something had to change. Um, and it at that point, 
I, I just had to figure something out to be different because one, I did not want to be unhappy in my life and I did not want to be unhealthy in my life. I love um, it. I love that. It seems like your experience encapsulates so many women's, although it was even more escalate amplified with your husband at one point being ill and you being the caregiver. But when you give and give and give, which is a beautiful thing to give to your family and to raise kids and to show up for the person you love when he's not doing well, but you give and give and give. And then when no one needs you like that anymore, then who are you? You know, I mean, it becomes a real issue of identity and to some extent, I've talked to other women, especially in coaching practice, who feel betrayed by that. Like I gave and gave and gave. I there's nothing left of me, and everyone else has taken and and zipped out the door. Door, sure. yeah, yeah. That's it's such a hard space to be in, um, and especially because you know my husband got sick when we were 24 years old. Oh. Um, so it was not like you know a short stint. We had my you know, several, two kidney transplants, several surgeries, open heart surgery. So there was a long bout of, of caregiving and, and not that you ever, I never regret it. I love my husband would do it all over again, but I lost myself in it. Mm -hmm. And, um, I lost myself in, in trying to figure out how to operate in this world that was created for me. Um, and then when it went away, it's like, okay, who am I supposed to be today? Right. Um, what value do I bring if I'm not doing the things that, you know, have been with me for so many years? And I think even if it's not caregiving for a sick person, it's a mother who's taking care of children, you know, and now they're grown and out the house. What do you do? Who are you without being a mother to these children? Right. Um, so I think women, especially, you know, men too, but I think women, especially because they spend so much of their lives giving to other people um, that when they get to that age, you know, 40, 50, it's like a, a slap in the face. It's like, okay, you're done doing the thing that you've been doing all of your adult life. Who, what are you going to do now? Who are right. you today? That's huge. That's really huge. So it just kind of hits you between the eyes and you were a young mom. It sounds like young mom and young wife Yes. and all of these experiences, beautiful though they are now you have what's a lot of life left in front of you. How did you decide that you didn't want to be that person working 14 hour days anymore? There had to be more. I, I saw other people and I talked to other women and it was interesting that so many has felt that way and none of us knew what to do. Like we didn't know what to do, how to get out of this space. So literally I just started reading books, okay. um, self-help books. I started going to different seminars. I gathered a community of women around me to, to support each other and to really try to have conversations that we felt like we couldn't have in other places because you can't complain about your your family <laughs> to your family so <laughs> you know where do you go so it it's was frowned right. upon <laughs> right it is they don't, it think it, they don't think there's anything wrong with it right <laughs> so, I love um, that that is such a good point so you needed yeah. a community outside of your wonderful family Absolutely. And, and I didn't have a lot of community outside of my family because I spent so much time, you know, either at work or with my family and uh, both places were the places that I felt that was bringing me down. So, um, but it was great to find a community of women that I can talk to, um, a space that I didn't feel like I was judged, um, where people also had the same kind of feelings that I had. And we were all like, oh my God, I thought I was the only one that felt like that. So it was great to find someone else that felt the way that you did. And um, we just, and that kind of put me on the path of getting Phoenix Ascension. It's like, okay, women need a space where could, they can just be themselves right. and not have to worry about whatever the outside world wants them to be. And how do you keep tapping into that? 
I love it. That sounds so wonderful. So you found a need, something that you needed to create because you didn't have it, but then you offered it to other people who responded in kind. And I love the name. You were explaining what Phoenix Ascension kind of means, um, but that's terrific. Now, what do you do with Phoenix Ascension and how does that ba add balance into your life? Oh, so Phoenix Ascension, the program has multiple layers. So we, I create content and coursework, um, like we're getting ready to launch our, um, renew release and reflect. So it's looking at 2022 and really identifying what went well for us, what didn't go well, what we need to leave and what we need to move forward on to, um, lay a foundation of success. So we, create content work. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with women, um, really trying to figure out if you're trying to achieve a goal or strive for success in your career, how do you also take into account um, your personal life and mm -hmm. leisure and happiness? And what is the true measure of success, right? I don't think we really step back to think about what does success really mean to us, not what it looks like on TV or on Instagram, but what does success really feel like when I want to be happy? Does it look like peace? Does it look like, you know, having this well-traveled life? What does it look like to you? And I really try to help people step back and, and evaluate that on a level that they can drive themselves, not driven by somewhere else. I like it. So it sounds like it's a very calm and compassionate way to find balance and move forward as opposed to a frenetic boot camp where people have to change everything all at once. <laughs> change does not happen all at once ever. Right. Um, and really it's helping you bring in tools to help you through the change, right? Um, and what we try to do is bite-sized change to move towards a larger change. Right. I like that so much. That's fantastic. So you're still now, your husband's doing better, it sounds like. Oh, absolutely. And you're still working your first job and you have this. Is it manageable now that you have found the community and the support that you need? So it is manageable. I actually... Um, take time off. Now there's ebbs and flows to it. Sure. Um, anybody who has their own business know that <laughs> there's ebbs and flows, but I'm happy. So mm -hmm. that is the biggest difference is every day I'm doing stuff that brings me passion and joy. And I can share it with my family and I can share it with my friends. And I'm working with women who I feel connected to and I hope feel connected to me. I'm sure they do. It sounds like it's so wonderful that you were able to look back at your life at some point and say, look, we've got all the material things and that's not a source of mission or purpose so much. There is more to life than that. And then you found it by helping still serving others, but also getting support at the same time. You know, it's a, it sounds like a wonderful circle. It is. It is. It's, um, I like to call it reciprocal energy, right? You give and you get back and it keeps fueling each other. So. And I think for women and, and men too, there's nothing quite like a supportive community to be able to make change less daunting. Yes, definitely. I, I tell my ladies, I said, find someone who is your 911 emergency contact, <laughs> you know, phone a friend have people in your life that you can reach out to because it's okay to ask for help. Right. And a lot of times we don't feel like it's okay to ask for help, but definitely ask for help and support one another. It's a good thing to role model to your kids as well so that they can see that, uh, you know, asking for help is a, is a very positive thing. Do you have any success stories you want to share uh, from Ascension? Um, definitely, definitely. Um, we've had women. So in the last, um, few months, we've been working on different things. And, um, the last goal that we've been working on is really to bring about change that, um, will be able to change a behavior. 
-hmm. So we, we take these little short jaunts. So we'll do 30 days, 60 days. So how do you do something that change a behavior? And, you know, I had one of my ladies come to me and she said, you know what? Um, I set out on this journey and I did not do what I meant to do, what I said I was going to do. She said, but what I learned is how to maintain the things to do every day so I can make it through to the next day because my life was so chaotic. And she said, usually in this space, everything goes and I don't do anything and I don't take care of myself, but I was able to keep this base level of self-care every day. And even though I didn't change what I wanted to change, I was able to do the things that I set up in the last challenge and I didn't let it go. So while I think sometimes we think that success looked like this drastic change, sometimes success is just maintaining the things that you need to do to care for yourself every day and keep moving while things are chaotic. Because a lot of times we let ourselves go. We're the last person that we care about when it's chaos. And I was so proud that she was able to maintain her self-care and maintain through this really kind of chaotic, hectic time in her life. And I applaud her for that. So I think that is a wonderful success because she has the template you know, then whatever else she wants to do, she's got that trajectory going. She's got all the habits in place and it may not be perfect, but it is a baseline that leads toward success. And that's pretty fabulous. Setting a foundation. And that's one, one thing that I truly believe, like if you can set a base level foundation that you can practice every day, that it becomes so natural, that it's instinctual, that you can add on much easier once you have that base level of self-care. Absolutely. Now, how can people find you and consider working with you? How can people reach out to you and get a hold of you? Um, I have a Facebook group. It's called Phoenix Ascension Framework. Um, you can, it's a group you can find. You can ask to join. Um, also, I'm on Instagram. Um, you can find me at Phoenix Ascension um, underscore MD. Or hello, Phoenix at Phoenix Ascension MD is my email. So perfect. That's fantastic. Well, I'm really excited about what you're doing. And I feel like that's going to help a lot of people. First of all, younger people, young women, and young parents should know if there are ways to not lose themselves, even though they are super, super busy, that would be terrific. But it's never too late to refine and reconnect. And it is an honor to raise a family. It's an honor to take care of people who need you, but there comes a time where you need to be on your own priority list. And I'm glad that you're helping people not feel bad about that and find their way. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here today, Vivian. I really appreciate it. See you.